This is the Splatch Turbo. Funded on Indiegogo, the Splatch scooter promises an ultra comfortable ride with first class suspension and a balance of comfort and convenience. With the curb appeal of well-known brands like Apollo and Zero, we can see why this scooter is gaining popularity with almost 1,000 backers on Indiegogo. But does it match their performance? This is Chuck with Electric Scooter Guide, the leading source for electric scooter reviews. Please take a moment to subscribe to our channel so that we can keep making videos like this one. Disclaimer, we were not paid and we're not affiliated with Splatch in any way. This scooter is available on Indiegogo, so purchase at your own risk. This comprehensive review will cover all the standard categories, price, performance, portability, including a trunk test, how to lock up the scooter, ride quality, build quality, safety features, customer service, overall pros and cons, and who should buy this scooter and who needs something else. The Splatch is a good looking Franken scooter with many of the industry's favorite safety features, but is it everything thrown together or a well-made design that'll stand the test of time? In this review, we're throwing the Splatch Turbo into the ring with three popular heavy hitters in the mid-range commuter class backed by well-known brands. The Segway 9Bot Max, the Apollo Lite, and the E-Move Touring. But first, the basics. Splatch is currently offering three deals on Indiegogo. The 36-volt Splatch Ranger for $769, the 52-volt Splatch Turbo for $829, or both for $1599. The Turbo has an ESG-certified top speed of 22.5 miles per hour, tested range of 18.4 miles, weighs 45 pounds, and can carry riders up to 264 pounds. The turbo that we have came in steel blue, as early backers of the project get to choose their color. For order shipping now, the Ranger is steel blue with a key start ignition, and the turbo is iron orange with a key card reader. The turbo lands in the middle of this commuter scooter battle around $30 more than the max with the E-Move Touring as the most expensive of the bunch at $899. We test all electric scooters with a 165 pound rider using RaceLogic data loggers with the scooter in its highest performance mode. The route includes many stops, rough terrain, with some uphill travel, and the scooter is ridden until the battery runs out. The 9Bot Max has the longest reach of any with the 28.1 mile range. The Touring has an 18.7 mile range, the Turbo 18.4, and the Apollo Lite 16.3. The Turbo gets about two thirds of the manufacturer claimed distance. The Splatch beats all other scooters with a tested top speed of 22.5 miles per hour right in front of the E-Move Touring at 22.3 miles per hour, with the light close behind and the max a few miles slower than the rest of the group. The turbo doesn't reach the claimed 28 miles per hour top speed. However, 22 miles per hour is a sweet spot for keeping up with traffic without going so fast you can't stop in an emergency. The turbo has power out of the gate, going from zero to 15 miles per hour in just 4.3 seconds, almost matching speed with the slightly faster Touring. The light is pretty close behind the two front runners and the Max trails in last. Going up to 20 miles per hour, the Touring maintains its lead, reaching that speed in just 7.2 seconds, which is ahead of the Turbo and the light, while the Max, with a 17.8 mile per hour top speed, isn't even in the running. The Splatch Turbo is an able hill climber, getting up the 200 foot 10% grade incline in just 13.6 seconds while still accelerating at the top. However, the Touring is the best hill climber of the bunch, climbing the hill in just 10.7 seconds. The light comes in third and the Max is the slowest climber of the group. As the only scooter with dual drum brakes in this competition, the Turbo has the most effective braking with a 15.9 foot distance in our 15 mile per hour to zero test. The Light and the Max have similar braking distances over 17 feet and the Touring comes in last with a distance of 21.5 feet. If you'd like to compare this scooter's data against any of the other scooters we've tested, check out the ESG certified stats on our website.
When weighing the turbo during testing, we found that it's actually 45 pounds, not 40 as the manufacturers claim. With folded dimensions of 43 inches long by 8 inches wide and 16 inches tall, it's a little cumbersome to carry upstairs, especially because the stem rotates as you're holding it. With a telescoping stem and screw and handlebars, you can make the turbo more compact, but I wouldn't want to lug it around for very long. This is the ESG trunk test. This passes the ESG trunk test. The ride quality on the Splash Turbo is top notch as the dual suspension smooths out most everything, absorbing bad roads and only giving you a brain massage over terrible terrain. It handles little bumps like a champ. We found that this suspension is even better than the eMove Touring, a scooter known for its excellent ride quality. With a 010X like arm for great stability and a wide turning radius, it's pretty easy to stay on a straight line while riding, but not without a cost noise, the rear reflector and cockpit rattle, and when coupled with a stem that gives some play, especially when braking or going over bumps, that makes the scooter feel a little less than perfect. However, we've got a fix for the fender issue in the next section. The turbo has strong acceleration, the trigger throttle is responsive, and the display is easy to read in sunlight. The brakes are a little stiff as the cables are tightly wrapped, but are tuned well for our 165 pound rider. To really brake effectively, you should throw your weight back over the rear tire to avoid skidding. Let's put it this way, maintaining an active and attentive riding stance will reward you with a comfortable ride on the splash. Splash has implemented the famous mid-range commuter tire trade-off with an air-filled 8.5-inch tire on the front and a solid 8-inch tire on the rear, making it a little lower maintenance. The rear solid tire is resistant to punctures, meaning you won't have to worry about getting flats, which are the most common on the rear tire. The front tire grips well, with a sharp profile allowing for quick turns while the rear tire gets less traction. The deck is covered in quality grip tape that offers good standing room with 4.5 inches of ground clearance. Note that rolling off a curb at a diagonal angle will cause the arm on the drum brake to make contact with the curb. This caused the brake arm to bend, which, over time, can impact brake adjustment and feel. Now looking at the build, it resembles some well-known heavy hitters above its price class like the Zero and Apollo models. Individual components on the Splash look familiar and are well-made, but its noisy ride reminds us of Franken scooters, mishmashing parts of different, well-known scooters together and not quite feeling cohesive. The Turbo has dual drum brakes which are an excellent feature at this price point. Although disc brakes are generally preferable to drum brakes because they have better overall performance, they are more involved to maintain and can more easily be damaged as they're not enclosed. Drum brakes, on the other hand, are completely enclosed in the wheel hub and generally require less maintenance. The trade-off of stopping power for ease of maintenance between disc and drum brakes is well worth it in my opinion. The turbo has a nice cockpit with a QS S4 throttle and screw-in handlebars with flat palmed hand grips. As with many scooters with this screw-in design, the handlebars loosen while riding. Along with an IPX5 water resistance rating, the tires come with a split rim design, making it easier to change tubes on the front wheel if you get a flat. The stem lever feels almost too easy to activate, making us question its long-term performance. We were able to reduce the stem play by around 10% by tightening an adjuster at the bottom center of the pivot. You can completely eliminate stem wobble by tightening this a lot. However, the latch on the stem will not disengage when fully tightened, so we had to loosen it up again. The kickstand is at a good angle and length, and the dual charging ports on the top of the deck are in a good position and allow you to cut your charging time in half with two chargers. That noisy ride, especially from the rear reflector rattling, becomes pretty annoying. However, you can easily transform your ride by taking five minutes to add clear silicone to the underside of the fender where the reflectors are attached, which eliminates the fender rattle. One nicely designed feature that the Splash Turbo has that many other scooters do not 
is the foot plate over the rear wheel. It's a good height and size to help you adjust your footing and has a slot that you can use to carry it or lock it up. Not only does the turbo come with many features we expect from well-known scooters, Splatch offers an accessories pack including a storage bag, charger, cable lock, phone mount, inner tubes, hand grips, and trolley wheels for $149. Find the link to the Splatch accessories pack in the video description. Both the Turbo and the Ranger come equipped with a security feature, making it harder for anyone other than you to turn on your scooter and ride. The Ranger comes with a key start ignition, while the Turbo has a card reader. After the scooter is powered on, you have to tap the card on the reader before you can get to the display settings and engage the throttle. If you feel like this feature is a nuisance, you can disable the card reader and reset the feature by adjusting P18 in the P settings. Lights on the turbo are attractive, but not very effective, and include deck-mounted button lights on the front and rear, and an LED strip down the stem. Although they help others to see you, you will still need a brighter headlight and other lights if you're riding at night. One safety oversight is that the Splash does not come with a horn or bell, so it's a good idea to grab one if you'll be riding with pedestrian and car traffic. Find a link to our favorite accessories in the video description. As an Indiegogo campaign that recently started shipping units, we don't have much to share about their customer service just yet. We reached out anonymously by email and received the first response within 24 hours, with a follow-up response less than two hours after that. They were friendly and informative, but we have little experience with Splatch's service outside of these examples. The Splatch scooter comes with a one-year warranty for the body and a six-months warranty for the battery. Overall pros include Best suspension in a mid-range commuter. Franken scooter with low maintenance features, including split rim for the front air field tire, solid rear, and dual drum brakes. Overall cons include noisy ride overall, but can be fixed, stem wobbles, and handlebars loosen. The Splatch Turbo is a feature-packed addition to the mid-range commuter class and provides a low maintenance affordable option from a lesser known brand. If you're looking for a fun, customizable, super smooth ride, the Splatch is a great choice. The Turbo is a little like a Monet, looking great from afar, but feeling slightly unfinished under close inspection. If you're looking for a completely finished, cohesive design that you won't need to adjust or modify, this is not the scooter for you. Also, if you know you'll need lots of support from the seller, this might not be the best choice. Splatch is still a pretty new company and we're not sure yet how they'll perform long term when it comes to customer service. Based on our ESG performance testing and its feature set, the Splatch Turbo is a solid mid-range commuter even as a slightly cobbled together Franken scooter. The Splatch adopts many of the best features from well-known scooters innovating at this price point by adding best-in-class suspension and dual drum brakes. If you're interested in learning more about the Splatch scooter, please see our website for a full written review. And if you're ready to purchase, follow the link below to save money and support our channel. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out our weekly live show featuring the latest from the electric scooter industry. Until next time, ride safe and don't forget to wear your helmet. See how the Ninebot Max, eMove Touring, and Apollo City fared in this ultimate scooter showdown. For tips on how to ride, join us for the 10 commandments of scooter riding.